Hello, I'm Steve Muskery and welcome to Workshop Essentials. I'm now ready to start cutting up some MDF to make the panels for my carcasses. And this particular board is going to yield six panels, which will be the tops and bottoms of my three cabinets. So I need four small pieces for the outside two, and then two bigger ones for the central cabinet, which is double width. The front edge of all these panels are going to be lit. But I don't want to lit this factory edge. It's not clean enough. It's quite a rough cut. There's a bit of damage to the veneer. It's crushed in a few places. It's been stood on its edge at some point. So I'm going to cut my panels to be finished width before I put the lipping on. And then when the lipping's on, they'll be about two millimetres oversized, and I can trim this back edge back to be nice and clean for the finished dimension. And I don't need to worry about what that dim dimension is. I happen to know that it's 551 millimetres, but I don't need to know that because I've got my rod. So I just need to know that it goes from the inside of the back of the cabinet to the front of the carcass, which is there. And then my track goes up to that pencil mark. The next challenge is to ensure that this track is exactly parallel to this edge. And I've got a little gadget to help me to achieve that. And this was one of the first things I ever filmed. This was on Workshop Essentials Volume 1, which is about 14 years ago now. And um, it's a, a setting gauge. It's got a scale on it, but it doesn't start at zero. It starts at 170 or thereabouts, which is the width of the track here. So I could, if I wanted, if I was working from numbers, I could set this to 551 millimetres. And then I would know that when that's a bit to the track, the cut will be 551 because that plus this gives me that reading. But I don't even need to know what that number is because I know that the track is up against the pencil mark, which is correct. So I simply put this up to the track and then move the head up to the board and lock it off. And then I can use that at this end to set this end of the track. Now, sometimes the, the board can be a bit bowed. So after I've set the second end, I go back to the first end to make sure that that's not sort of rotated on the, on the bow. And it has moved a little bit, look, just a little bit. Move that over. There we go. That's right. That's right, spot on. Excellent. So now the track is in the right place, it's parallel, and all that remains to do is to set my saw up, set the depth 19 millimetres, plus about six for the track, plus one to go through cleanly, set the depth, and then I can make that cut. <laughs> For the second cut, I don't need to make any pencil marks at all because my setting gauge is already set. So this comes over here. Like that, and like that. And again, just check the first end's not moved. Just a little bit, there we go. And we do it all over again.
And then we have two panels with a very nice, clean, new edge, ideal for lipping. Now I've got to get my MFT set up and you need to start looking at it from over here. So I'll see you in a moment. Having made my two rip cuts, it's now time to cross cut these panels to size. And I'm going to use my MFT. So I've got two low dogs here against which my worksheet is pressed. And I've got two taller dogs here against which my track saw will be registered. But the first thing is to find out where I want to make the cut. And I'm taking that dimension directly off my rod. So that goes up to the end like that. And that tells me where to make the cut. Now I'm going to cut three small panels out of one board and one out of the other. And I've already done one of them out of this actually. Here we are. That pencil mark has to go up to the edge of the track, like that, which it nearly is, actually, it's not far off. And then my length stop goes into the MFT about there. Right. Now there's been a little bit of jiggery pokery going on because <laughs> when I started this scene, that peg was in the wrong, that dog was in the wrong place, it was in that hole, and I was just about <laughs> to cut through it with my saw when I realised it. So uh, that's why I've already got one here. Uh, disaster averted. So, up to the stop, track nice and square, workpiece registered properly. Let's have another go. Look at that, perfect. And there we are, four panels, one size, two panels, another size. And not a single bit of actual measuring in the whole job. Very pleased with that. So next it's over to the bench to do some routing. I have to route a very shallow groove on the front edge of all my panels and the back edge of some of them as well. And if they were all no bigger than this, I could do it on my router table where there's plenty of support. But some of these panels are 2.1 meters long and there's no way I can manhandle them on my own on my router table. So instead, I'm gonna to have to use a handheld router. The cutter that matches the tongue is this one and it's got a half inch shank. Even though it's a very small groove, it's got a half inch shank. And that in turn means I need to use my big router in conjunction with the fence to keep that depth of cut shallow. And the result is that there is hardly any router base surface area left to work on. It's, most of it is covered by the fence. And that in turn means that it's not very stable. It's the easiest thing in the world for this to tip because all the weight is on this side and there's not much registration area. And it's even worse at the beginning I mean, there's only a couple of square inches, a few square centimetres of surface contact between the base and the workpiece at the beginning and at the end as well. So I've made a stabilising foot. It's in two pieces. And I started with this piece in the middle, which is six millimetres, a little bit thinner than these eight millimetre guide rods. And I cut it so that it fits perfectly 
between the guide rods. And then I glued it to the base. So this stops the base from twisting. Now it's not quite thick enough. I want it to end up exactly in line with the base, flush. So I've glued on a piece of plastic laminate. Then I started to embed the nut. First of all, find out where it's got to go. So from the center of the um, mid plate here, a tiny hole to show me where to drill on the underside, and then through the laminate, and then a 10 millimeter hole for the cavity for the M6 nut, because an M6 nut requires a 10 millimeter spanner. Then I used double-sided tape to stick on the clamping plate and drilled for the peg holes, which also stop it from twisting. And there are six millimeter pegs in six millimeter holes here. And then I enlarged these to six and a half millimeters so it was easy to get in and out. And then finally, some knobs, one at the front, one at the back, and one with a stud on to act as a clamping plate. The pegs go in the holes for alignment, the knob tightens things up, and that goes on the fence rods. And the result is that this becomes a lot more stable. I can start with almost no base on the workpiece and provided I hold it down there, look mom, no hands. It's still rock solid. And as the cut progresses, I move my hand back to the center and at the very end, I'm pressing down on this back knob here until the, the cutter is clear of the workpiece. And the router is under my full control all the time. So, let's see how it works in practice. We need air, we need volts, we need eyes and we need ears. Fingers crossed. And that felt good. It really did feel as if there was no risk of any slippage at all. So, let's see how it fits. Ooh, look at that. That is perfect. That is just what I wanted, actually. And when I've got some glue squeeze out on that, that's going to be pretty darned invisible. So all I've got to do now is the same on all my other panels. So, thank you for watching, and until the next time, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio!